Hello, 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 and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me, Peter. So this is just a quick one, an update on my Ngon plugin. Um, for those who've been using that, I know that um, I've had several hundred downloads by this point, so thanks a lot to everybody for that. Now I have updated it with a uh, pro version. It's a paid version. Um, so the original version... Um, if we go down to our Angon asset here, the original version, you were able to process one mesh at a time, create a low poly, and it would create its own collection for that, and a high poly, um, and vice versa. So there's a video on how to do that. Um, so what we can do now is we can, for most aspects, we can just batch it. So you just need to, you know, square select, rotate object if needed and we've got that up on the um the right axis we'll just activate the floor you can see he's in the right spot maybe he needs to come up a little bit but instead of having to do one object at a time that's all been done and uh, i've also added a merge vertices button now i did notice that when we were creating the low polys and the high polys it was most case merging the vertices just on its own account but it was still a bit buggy and it didn't um always do it because that's not exactly what it's designed to do so now if we press our merge vertices button you'll see it will remove any doubles so it's just taken that down by a small amount depending on your mesh it'll be a smaller or a larger amount now this robot if i was going to be animating him um i would do all of this separately but just for the sake of this uh, tutorial, I'm just going to merge uh, the objects into simple groups just so we can don't spend the whole time uh, doing everything all at once. Now, I do believe there's a double object there. Nope. Um, and I believe these components can become part of that that yeah okay so and then we've got this we can merge these together and those and we'll merge these three And those that should be fine uh, what have we got here have we got anything missing so we got our legs okay so we're just going to name those legs we've got our torso thing hips i guess but we'll call them torso and we've got our head Our antenna, we'll call this brain. Okay. I've, that was already part of the head. Oh, well. Um, uh, what have we got here? Are these rings? Should be another. We'll put all these rings. those can all go as one i'm just going to call this components okay so we've got five objects now okay so we're going to select everything from the bottom uh, parts and these components and this is where it gets kind of cool okay so we're going to give this a material okay we'll just call it uh bottom and we're going to control L and link materials so that all of our separate objects that we've got selected share the same material. And then we're just going to go smart UV wrap and combine. Okay. And then when we open our UV map, it's all there. So all we've got to do is pack it with any packer. There's 
from 3.6 onwards in Blender. Um, it's got its own internal packer. I like to use UV Packmaster, as I've said many times before, just because of all of the options. That is a paid add-on, but it's a godsend. Um, then we're going to just invert our selection. We're going to give this its own material. Why has that got the same material? We're going to give this its own material. Uh, we'll get rid of that from that one, and we'll go new, and we'll go top. Okay, and then we're going to just uh, make sure that we link any materials that are separate. So Everything apart from the legs. Actually, the components... That needs to be bottom. So if we open that one, yeah, that should look right. And was there anything else in that? The components. Okay, yep, that's what we've got there. And these should all have... Let's just remove the material. We'll just call this one. Okay, and then I think just those two should be part of that. Okay, and then we can name uh, that material as top. Okay, we need to link. That should be bottom now, and this should be top. Okay. Making sure that that's top. Okay. Got a, I got a little bit perfuddled with my uh, uh, textures there, but now we can Smart UV unwrap and combine this one. Open it up. It's all there. Select all, pack. And boom, we've got that there. Okay, so we know how to export that. But now we've got that. Now we've got our UVs. That's all good. Okay. We can select everything. We can duplicate this object, just pretend it's a high poly. It's not. Uh, we'll just invert our selection so we've got our original. Okay, we'll create our low poly. It's created our group, our backup group, and our data group. So if you don't know how this works, if I um, select a low poly, we've added a triangulate modifier, a decimate modifier, and a data transfer modifier. The data transfer modifier is um, showing a original version of um, the model like that, and it's transferring the normal data onto the uh, decimated triangulated version. So we'll just turn these ones off for a moment, and we've got just our other high ones here. We'll select all of those. And we will create a high poly, and that's going to create its own group as well. And what you'll notice here is that before, if we turn our data transfer modifier off, uh, actually, let's, yep, there we go. Where are we? Okay. We need to create our high poly group again. And you might not have just seen that. But if we turn our data transfer modifier off on this, you'll see that we triangulate it and we'll go back. And we had these shading errors here to begin with. Let's just stick another mat cap on to... This is one of the mat caps that you can get in my mat cap pack. Maybe... Wrong, wrong area, wrong area. Okay. Or you use this one. So you can see these. Maybe something a bit more shiny. You can see these shading errors here. When we turn our modifiers on, they're actually gone. Okay. And that's for the high poly as well as for the low poly. Although the low poly will have some more artifacts, but we'll then be baking the high poly uh, data into there. So it's really super handy. And. Um, it just optimizes the mesh uh, to a point where it's ready to be textured or baked or both. So look, we've created quite a bit of a mess here. Okay. One thing you may have noticed is that when we duplicated this, we got the dot zero zero one underscore high. 
okay when we go into um, texturing software we want that suffix underscore low for our low poly and underscore high and we want the first name to match so obviously having that dot zero zero one doesn't help because it's not going to be recognized in our texturing software so I have included this little box, which is basically a search and replace for nothing. So it searches and replaces nothing. So we choose uh, .001 in here, and we can just remove any text from any selected objects, or any and all selected objects. So we do that now, and our naming conventions are right. You probably won't encounter that problem if you... Um, I mean, there's a lot of different things. Now, I'm going to be improving all of these over time but this is version one and it's pretty much ready to go i've already textured a couple of objects uh using this process and it's just super quick like um i've been talking to you for 10 minutes and we're pretty much done now like you can see we have made a big lot of stuff here so i've included a couple of tools to just get you back to where you started so um we can go remove modifiers and backups and it, you can see that we just removed all of the backup stuff there uh, remove suffix from active and then we can just um, go into here and delete all of that delete our high poly now we're just left with this we can reactivate that select all of that find our and basically um just delete our low poly group up here and we're back to where we started so you can create a big mess and get back to where you were really quickly just by using these backtrack tools so look 12 minute video um we've got a we ended up with a fully uv mesh with separate parts and components different material names and then we can end up baking that in uh, marmoset now I did prepare one earlier so we're going to have a look at that now so here in marmoset what we've got is our mesh uh, you can see maybe that there is some uh, deformities and whatnot on there but when we go and preview our bake, we bake our geometry. You can see that from our very quick processing, we've got really great uh, ambient occlusion and normals. And obviously you can apply this to your high poly. Uh, we UV'd it really quickly. That's really great. If we go back and we turn our preview off, um, and then we just turn it back on you can really see the difference now obviously um, if we used an actual high poly we'd be getting better edges and things like that but I think this is just a really great result for the UVs and for everything else so um, please uh, go and Get the free version try it out and if you like it go and buy the high version uh for those of you who have already uh paid on gum road um i will or for those who already um paid on gum road i've already sent you a discount uh code and for people who downloaded it on gum road um there will be a discount code sent out as well and for those on Blender Market, you can just use the upgrade path. Thanks a lot for watching again. And um, I think the next thing we'll do something fun. And thanks again for watching. Bye.